This session of the World Peace Game is convening. As you know, the two conditions for winning the World Peace Game are all 50 crises must be solved satisfactorily according to the weather goddess, Ms. Habermacher, and also each country's asset value must have risen above its starting point. When we last visited with educator John Hunter in 2008, he was teaching in a Charlottesville elementary school and a documentary was in the works about a special game he created for fourth graders in his classroom. Today, that game is played around the globe. Join us as students and teachers from five different countries gather for Charlottesville's first ever international world peace game. Come on. You know how human beings sometimes when they feel like they're almost at the finish line, they relax a little bit? You know about that phenomenon where they sort of just, ah, I got this, I'm okay? The world is a delicate machine. Every one of us is needed. Are you ready to win this game if you can? Yes. Let's do it now. Negotiate, go! John, for those who don't know, what is the World Peace Game? Oh, Terry, what a question. <laughs> Uh, the World Peace Game is a gigantic geopolitical simulation that I invented in 1978 as a brand new teacher with not a thought of what to do. I built it around my students' passions and their interests, which at that time uh, was only game playing. We didn't have any social media. So uh, <laughs> we, we went with a game and came up with this uh, structure. It was actually only a two-dimensional thing back then, but now it's three-dimensional, as you can see, and it's um, now caught on to help solve critical and creative thinking problems uh, of the world. We interlock them and give them to a group of about 25 to 30 to 40 kids. They're divided into country teams or cabinets, and each one has a prime minister, secretary of state, a minister of defense, and a CFO. We have a World Bank, we have arms dealers, we have a weather goddess who controls a random stock market, random weather. So they get into the teams, and essentially they each take a turn after a negotiation period moving these pieces on the board and c trying to get out of those 50 problems in a short period of time with no map and no way out. I, and it's it's mind-boggling, but it's idea, fabulous. But <laughs> so we, we visited with you several years ago now, yeah. and a lot has happened mm. since then. So first, let's talk about the documentary. Yeah. Well, Chris Farina, beautiful guy, independent filmmaker here in Charlottesville, Here in Virginia. Charlottesville. Yes. And he approached me in uh, 2005. He said, I'd like to make a film, an independent film. And I got very excited thinking we're going to Hollywood. And he said, no, that means I have no money. It's going to be a very small budget film. So he made the film. World and, Peace and Other and Fourth, fourth Grade achievements. achievements. That's the title of it. But the film screened at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Got a great reception. But uh, the Bergen International Film Festival director, Tor Fossey, was there picked up the film, brought Chris and I and our families to Norway, screened the film multiple times, and Chris's small film won the Audience Award out of 145 international films that uh, 2010, I think, it screened there. And it led to so much else after that. The film also mm -hmm. aired on um, American, American Public, Public Television, 85% yeah. of the market of that. In the U.S., and yeah. So a lot of people were learning about mm -hmm. it, and it was drawing attention from a lot of different groups, and yeah. you formed a partnership. Yeah, in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, Jamie Baker, who is the executive director of the Martin Institute for Teaching Excellence, immediately understood and reached out to us and offered a partnership, and that, that partnership really provided, uh, as, as we would say in Charlottesville, the lift to give us a sort of a stratospheric ride internationally, sharing this idea and the deeper understandings that really come uh, from this, that really it's, it's uh, deeper than the game itself. World peace means that everyone's kind of prospering. Working together in a way that we can communicate without violence, being like, happy with everything and everybody. All the countries are getting along and they're all having agreements and they're not fighting. Unity is the key to having world peace. If you're not connected with anybody or if you don't have any friends or anybody, you're not going to be able to achieve that. The odd and amazing thing about it is I'm just a teacher, a small town elementary school teacher, and I do what most teachers over the world try to do, which is just create a big, uh, a good piece of work, a good piece of curriculum, and do the best for every single child individually as they need. And so it really was never anything but that. 
TED Talk. That TED Talk. You were, <laughs> you kicked butt at the TED Talk. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so, no, talk about that experience. Well, TED, TED was the oddest thing because, you know, we were specially invited. Uh, I think Chris Anderson, the owner of TED, took a risk. He wanted to talk about education. He wanted something to put into the conversation that was different. So somehow he got wind of us. Next thing we knew, we're in there with Bill Gates and uh, Goldie Hawn and oh, Peter gee. Gabriel, and they're walking ah. around like normal people. <laughs> and I'm on the TED main stage and scared out of my mind. And the lights are blinding, but somehow it all came off. And that just led to so much else after the TED talk. Well, and, and, and then for yeah. the first time yeah. in Charlottesville, you've held an international world peace game oh. camp. Talk about that. It, it was an incredibly moving thing, uh, Terry. We've had a funder, uh, an individual who provided the means for us to bring teachers from five countries and about a dozen U.S. cities here for one week. Uh, these are trained facilitators, people I've trained over the last four years. So this week has been the master class teachers and 36 students solving problems of the world and taking the teaching to a higher level. How much money does your country need? Yeah, I can't help you. It is the most extraordinary thing I have ever seen or had the privilege to be a part of. I've learned through the game that the stronger my own opinions are or anyone's opinions, the more limited your world becomes, the more limited your thinking becomes. I didn't learn that until I watched these children, really, you know? And these are the lessons that are gonna change the world. Students genuinely want to be able to make decisions in their lives. They genuinely want autonomy. They want to be a part of something real. They want to be a part of something that is important. And this game allows them to do all of that. In addition, it allows them to speak their minds and be a true integral part of the solution and the process. I didn't expect it to be this hard. Like, when I opened the dossier, I was like, okay. And then I saw the packet of Crisis number 11. If you make one mistake, you might lose the whole game. I did not expect that. It was really hard. It's just fun to be the head of a country. It was awesome in negotiation time. Like people were handing me like 50 different things to sign. Then I had to like do all that. Mr. Rickabona, please sign Mr. Rickabona, we have just said what accept the secret empire. Now will you please sign it? Why does everyone Talk about how the week played out. Uh -huh. Well, the game is designed uh, by me <laughs> to essentially overwhelm the children. So when they start, they're in despair. And from despair, they experimentally try to solve problems and fail. The game is designed to fail massively. I want them to learn how to fail successfully so they can learn how to get through life dealing with everything that comes. Right. And so those failures lead to success, collaborative success, and eventually they get a moment where they have an epiphany, they always do as a group, where they suddenly understand the structure of the game is the teacher. And the structure of the game is what they're playing against, not against each other as countries on the planet. And then they move through to solving problems at a mastery level that's just phenomenal. No, no, but they the weather goddess me. told me that this is enough to refill the aquifer. So I'm going to need Half the wells are already removed. This is enough to fill up the aquifer. The weather it was a good opportunity for us as teacher to be involved, but also to involve a uh, student in the critical thinking and what are the opinion about all the conflict around the world. Conflict is inevitable, but being determined to bring forward a strong commitment to making the best possible outcome happen. That's, that's critical. Without that, we lose the world. Now, finally, with this game, I've got the feeling that uh, there really is hope. And I'm quite confident, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, very hopeful. And, and especially after this week, because it was really very inspiring. It just strikes me every time I see the game now, how much adults struggle with the same problems that uh, the participants here today uh, uh, were doing. So, If I were to speak my mind, I would say that any school should really have this, any class should have the privilege of, of doing this kind of uh, education. Teachers had a hard time, they had to keep their hands off of this and the group of children, which is not what teachers do very well. Yeah, yeah. But they're here to take the training they have already received in watching a World Peace Game in the master class, supporting it to a higher level. Right. So I asked them to help me 
to make this a legacy piece. They were working on, we would call them standards or guidelines or principles of the game that will outlast me. So we'll always know what a World Peace game really is, what it authentically looks like when it's played properly. So talk about some of the exciting places that you have presented the World Peace Game. Uh, well, you know, we've been invited to talk at institutions of higher education, Harvard. Uh, we've been to Stanford. We've been to Google headquarters. Uh, IDEO in Silicon Valley has invited us to give a talk to their campus. Uh, strangely enough, the film has screened at the United Nations. Chris and I and the Martin Institute representative Jamie Baker went and screened the film. And we were invited to the Pentagon on several occasions with my nine-year-olds. We talked with... Defense Secretary Leon Panetta for a half an hour about his problems and he about ours. And we saw eye to eye on solutions. It's amazing. Talk about what's uh -huh. coming up uh -huh. with this. Uh, we were shocked. We, we received an award in 2012 from the Globe Art Organization, an NGO in Vienna, Austria. They asked us to do a world peace game and they supported the funding for that. This is in German. I'm speaking English. The students are translating into German. We Skype with another World Peace game I had trained the facilitator for in Romania simultaneously, and one of our 10-year-old Minister of Defense is translated from Romanian into German and English in the room. He was a real international diplomat at that moment. But meanwhile, offers from Taiwan and South Korea, Japan, we get calls from mainland China quite this often, is actually. so exciting. Who would know, you know? What's in store for you? This has all happened because of the help and support of so many other people. I would say I stand on their shoulders. It's literally true, we're so interdependent. And the heart of this game is self-introspection, so every day I try and relentlessly weed, weed out the faults and clear the filters and the, the preconceptions so I can see what actually exists, what we actually ought to do. The world seems to have opened to the game, so we're simply going to go and see where we're led and follow that and try and be as helpful as we can. The World Peace Game is won. Fixing all the problems is fun and, and challenging, and if I could do the World Peace Game again, I would. I would just like to say that was, this is one of the greatest experiences in my life, and if I, I feel like if I can beat this game, I can do really anything I want to in life.